Let's move to Article 4. <laughs> Budget Committee recommended, or rather not recommended, this one, 3 to 4. Does anyone wish to speak on Article 4? Yes, ma'am. Ah, the Lady of Hampton. <laughs> Welcome. I'm Nancy Stiles. I live at One Hayden Circle in Hampton. I have no children or grandchildren in the Hampton School District at the moment. But of all of the articles, this is the one I am most passionate about. And that is because I think providing security and a safe place for our kids to learn, a safe place for our teachers to teach, is probably one of the most important things that this community can do for its school system. We are looking for excellence in our education, and we have that. I want to continue that by making sure that we have a safe school. There is nothing more important than a child developing a relationship with a police officer at an early age, age five, six, seven, nine, so that when they get older, they have that to rely on. I want to have someone in our schools that is trained to react in a crisis. God forbid we should ever have one. I hope we never do. I would rather pay every day to have a police officer in our schools ready to save those little five and six year olds. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to speak on article number four? <coughs> no one else wishes to speak on article four? I will. Ma'am. <laughs> Amy Hansen, 98 Lock Road. Um, I've uh, participated in um, the schools for several years. I have uh, two seventh graders and a sophomore. So I've witnessed the SROs working in schools firsthand. So they're not only there for safety, they're also there for um, community building with the students. So students are interacting. They're getting to know police officers firsthand. In addition, the, the SRO is there to address issues for children at risk or who are not making uh, great decisions. And we want to influence of these lives of these children, whether they're in education in life or education in their classroom. So I think community building to have our police officers, especially with everything that's happening in the world today, um, to have children get to know them on a, on a in a positive way, in a safe setting, in addition to, uh, as a no-brainer, as she said, uh, the security and safety of our, our children. Um, the other thing is when you put a cost on it, I, the other night I did agree with you. you could, we could throw money at this for a long, long time, security measures in our school. I agree with you. It's one of the fastest growing businesses in the United States. But I don't find the superintendent and the decisions that they make to be wasteful. If anything, you're always like, oh, we really wanted that, but you know, you know, we do without. But this is one of those issues that should go directly to the public, and I know you can't prevent that. Um, but I, I think the community needs to decide whether they want to spend that hundred thousand dollars or not to protect their children. And I think you can see we have a pretty passionate community about their children. So thank you. Thank you. Anyone else wish to speak on Article Number Four? <laughs> Citizen Sawyer, please join us. I would never beg to steal your name, Tim. <laughs> it's not my name. It's everyone. Okay, I'll agree with you. Um, this article, uh, I, I spoke last night at the selectmen's meeting, and I understand the conversations sometimes where, where is that line? And again, I agree with you. I'm a taxpayer in this community. By the way, Rich Sawyer, 41 Vanderpool Drive, so I'm here as a citizen. Welcome, citizen. Thank Sawyer. you. I appreciate it. I believe that this is a topic worthy of discussion. Mm -hmm. But I also think it's a topic worthy of mature mm -hmm. discussion based on facts, mm -hmm. okay? And I think as citizens, we all have to make that decision. Is this something we can afford? And I truly do respect the people that don't agree, that they think it's either they don't agree with the concept or they don't agree with the cost. Mm -hmm. I respect your vote on that. What I would ask the citizens when they weigh that for themselves <coughs> and have heard what they say, Make those the reasons you discuss it. Make those the reasons you make your decision on how you cast your vote. But don't allow some of the things that we've heard in this room by some members of this committee that were nothing but mudslinging and derogatory towards an entire group of people, police officers, because of a tragedy that happened in Florida somehow affects how we should vote in Hampton on this. It had to be one of the most ridiculous discussions 
I've ever experienced in 30 years as a police officer. I get it. Sometimes people don't like the police. And sometimes people have access to grind because of the actions we have to take. And if that isn't clear to people that that was what was going on, then I invite you to go back and watch the meetings. It was a ridiculous exhibition. And please don't allow that to influence your vote. Don't allow it. If, if, if you don't agree with me that this is not a good idea for our schools, then vote against it. Somehow we'll get through it. We, we, the world is not going to come to an end if this doesn't pass. But make your vote intelligently on mature discussions. Thank you. You said that we should not, we should not look to Florida for our... I'm example. sorry, I can't hear you, Tim. You're saying we should not look to Florida for our example? Is that what I heard you say? No, so the, the manner in which, again, we can have discussions about looking around and what's going on around us, absolutely. But in, to lump it in the manner it was categorized, I don't, I don't think anybody that's reasonable could say that was a reasonable discussion. Right, that's so my opinion. The characterization, not the, the characterization. Okay, so we you. obviously, when we look at these programs and how we develop them, you have to look over the hedges. You have to look at what other people okay. have done and take the lessons learned. Got it. But to sit there and cast aspersions of, against police officers in general over what happened down there, it's just absolutely ridiculous commentary, in my opinion. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else wish to speak on article number four? Yes, sir. Good evening. Welcome. Um, I, I come up here to approach the Budget Committee. And you are, of course, Keith Lassard. Keith Lassard, 173 Mill Road, Hampton, New Hampshire, mm -hmm. USA. Welcome, Keith. Thank you. Um, I understand you guys have a hard job to do, and sometimes it's difficult to do, and you do have to make certain decisions. Um, but at home, when I was watching the discussion about police presence uh, in our schools, um, at first, when I was, when they first came to schools, I thought, do we need cops in schools? I'm from a different generation, I guess. But you know, after I've seen, I'm sorry they used the word cop, but that was in a, 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 um, in, in a, in a good way. There were comments made that there were not any shootings at schools in New Hampshire. Sadly, there was in Walpole Elementary School. And I know this, um, actually I'm getting some, I call them chicken pimples, but they're goosebumps. And um, Anna, our assistant AP, was at that school when there was a shooting. So she brings some realistic comments to our leadership team when we talk about security. The young lady that spoke earlier about security at Center School, security is paramount to everybody. We teach people in the buildings, don't be looking in, look out. See who's coming up to the building. See what's going on. Security is on everybody's mind so much. It's almost distracting. The other thing is, another story that well, it's not a story, it's a fact, but in the book about the Sandy Hook shooting, that young man that came from Kingston, New Hampshire, he does have roots in New Hampshire, he went by the high school after he murdered his mother and saw that there was a police cruiser there. What did he do? He drove to the next building. There was no police cruiser there. That's when he went in. So there's a lot of power in a police cruiser being parked in front of a school. There's a lot of good outcome for students to develop positive relationships with policemen. I just think you really need to think deep on, I think this is money well spent. I don't like spending money either. Um, but I think this is money well spent. If they'll drive to a different school, I don't want them to drive to any other school or any other place. But if they don't come into one of my buildings, I'm happy. And, and um, I want people to feel secure in our buildings. It's just so important to all of us to feel secure. We practice lockdown drills. We practice evacuation. And, you know, Hampton PD and Hampton Fire Department are very involved. 
They have quick responses. They're there for us. But I just, I, wanna, I don't want to dwell on it any longer, but there's no pen here from write my, my name down on. But <laughs> um, thank you. Um, I hope you'll reconsider that and please support the additional policemen for um, the Hampton School District. Thank you very much. Thank you, Keith. One point of clarification, if I may, Keith. Do you know what year that Walpole shooting took place? And what year was that Walpole shooting? Uh, I don't want to get away your age. Sorry, what? <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, it was in 2012. 2012. Thank you. Thank you very much. I appreciate all the hard work you guys do. Thank you, Keith. I appreciate your uh, valuable input. Anyone else wish to speak on Article 4? Uh, 